Today I will be analyzing weapons, enchant combinations, and which is more optimal. I will not be going over for every specific class, I will just be going over every weapon and viable combination that there is in the game. There This is Inferno Enchant. You have a small chance to apply burn. When you would have applied burn, you will deal 25% more damage. You obtain this by completing the parkour at Mount Thol Volcano, the left side, at level 25. And um, this enchant is really good for damage because it inflicts burn, and it pairs well with the weapon called um, the Dragon Bone set. Basically, the Dragon Bone weapons, what happens is that when you hit an enemy inflicted with burn, which Inferno can cause, it will do drastically more damage, which is why the Inferno Enchant is the best pair with Dragon Bone weapons. You don't need Inferno Enchant as things like Immolation and Alchemist Potion can also cause burn, but it's the most consistent way to get this dam to take this really high damage buff from the weapon. Additionally, there's a triple synergy with Inferno and Blessed Ring of the Dragon. Blessed Ring of the Dragon gives you a damage buff where you would have inflicted burn. The typical duration is typically a few turns unless someone consumes the burn early. In that case, you will, your damage buff will run out the moment the enemy has no burn. Um, this is this works really well because the damage boost from Dragon Ring is, is very high and since you're also stacking with Inferno and Dragon Bone weapon, you're getting a triple damage boost which is extremely good. Um, Inferno is a little bit RNG, but it's not its not that bad to proc, it's only 25% chance. And this combination is viable for basically any DPS, you can run it for any DPS and it'll do well. Um, it may not be the best for some of them with because of Frost Enchant or potentially Reaper, and let's move on to that now. For Frost, the description for Frost in the Trello is that you can you have a chance you have extra chance to apply chilled and when you do you will do AoE damage but this is not the full extent of what it does he also does a you also do additional single target damage if the target that you're attacking has frost most notably this is very noticeable with berserker's carnage with frost ice Rune, and greatsword where you will do a lot of extra flat damage allowing for carnage to do upwards of 4000 damage without much setup and its, most, and its most optimal synergy is the Ice Rin uh, series of weapons. Ice Rin series of weapons, what they do is that they have a low chance of inflicting frost. With the enchants, the chance to inflict frost is further increased. And basically, because you have the higher chance of inflicting frost, you will be able to proc the frost enchant more consistently. There are other methods like ice shards and whatnot, but if you're not a mage and if you have low utility options, this is your best bet to get to make the most use out of frost enchant, which is now unobtainable. And next, let's move on to cursed. The curse has a 16.67% chance of inflicting a random debuff ranging from poison to all the way to sundered, which is which pr makes it so I can it can be a really good enchant. Um, I would people pair this with Ice Rin Greatsword for Berserker because the Carnage ticks like 50 times, meaning you can trigger cursed a lot during that period. So cursed is really good for multi-hit moves. And pairs very nicely with Ice Rin weapons as you can inflict frost and other debuffs, which is really good. Um, the Cursed Enchant has a double synergy with Chaos Orb. Chaos Orb is, has a 33% chance of inflicting an extra deep, or extra random debuff where you would have inflicted a debuff. So let's say I'm on Assassin and I and I crit, I have a 33% chance of inflicting another debuff if the poison was the only debuff that landed. If I land more debuffs, I have a greater chance of inflicting a random debuff from the Chaos Orb. This also is a triple synergy with the Ice Weapons because the Ice can also contribute uh, as a chance to inflict another extra debuff from the Chaos Orb. If you are a shielder class, you may want to run the Dark Sigil because when you in where you would have inflicted debuffs, you will gain Dark Sigil stacks and when there's 6, you will deflect an orb that does flat damage to all enemies on the field and gives more debuffs. Most notably, you would use you probably use this with Paladin because you can block using uh, shields like the Ice Rind or the Buckler Shield and you will deflect um, Dark Sigil orbs and we'll get into the optimal si um, shield combinations for it right now. Um, basically, if you are a slime race, run the Ice Rin shield because you will deflect 3 debuffs every turn. The Slimy Buckler will deflect weakness and uh, blindness every turn. I mean, if you get hit while blocking, which is good for people that are not already a slime race because the slime race already gets the Slimy Buckler built into their passives. And 
that that way you will be able to deflect deflect a lot of debuffs with the Dark Sigil. Additionally, you can use Immolation to gain even more Dark Sigil stacks even faster, 4 for Ice Rune Shield like them, and 3 for Slamming Buckle or anything. For the, these supports also have some options, so first we have the Jade series of weapons. There is no spear for this unfortunately, but it gives you more incoming and outgoing healing. This is sometimes bugged, so if you can't use the Jade Broadsword, I recommend using something else. And if you had if you had the sanity remaining to pair it with the best possible option, you would go with Life Song because the Jade series increases your incoming healing, and so does Life Song whenever you proc it. Though I do recommend to run Inferno, Cursed, or something more supportive instead because the chance you will proc this is really low, and it's mainly for healer classes. But if you want to regenerate more per turn, this is a pretty viable option. It can also let you get healed for more in MV, which could contribute to triggering your, your Saint's Narthana Sigil more easily. Next, we have the Vastic Glaive. It has a random on-hit effect that's rare depending on your majority stat type. If you are a Vastilian race, you have a greater chance of in triggering this weapon. Um, I would recommend using this if you're like um, a casual, more casual player, not trying to nuke anything, because it, this is this is pretty like the, there's really no conditions other than RNG. And um, if you want to get some funny crit chance, I recommend using this with a luck build. Even though it might not be the most viable, it's still pretty funny. Overall, I don't see much point of using this weapon as a as a DPS player outside of like Impaler because Impaler's DPS isn't really that high when you go nuke, so you're basically forced to use this. Also, it's pretty good for supportive roles because of the endurance effect and the speed effect, giving like defense and whatnot. So uh, this is actually pretty useful for like Saints and stuff like that. The Black Sea weapons just give you a flat damage, I mean a percent damage boost that's unconditional but it's not that much. It's pretty good for mages and you can easily and you can get this at the start of the game, just go to the deep root shop and buy it for gold. So if you're a beginning player or a new player or some player that doesn't want to meet any conditional bullshit, this weapon is for you. And now let's talk about the most overpriced weapon set in the game, the Dark Blood series. The Dark Blood reflects debuffs whenever whenever you get a debuff and reflects it to the enemy. Example, if a mushroom inflicts one stun on you, the mushroom will now be stunned. And by and now um, for enchants, you can pretty much run Inferno, Ice, whatever you want on it really. It's pretty flexible because you're deflecting the debuffs at the end of the day. And people use this commonly in Yarthal because you can deflect his flames and gain insane damage bonuses from his his the Dragon Ring. And and also this is this weapon set is extremely good for brawlers because brawlers gain damage boosts whenever they deflect debuffs of any sort from their mastery. So if you are a brawler, I recommend you grab the Dark Blood series to use whenever applicable and switch to the the Dragon ba Bone weapons whenever you can or like the Ice Rin Seistus if you're running Frost. Do be wary though that the Dark Blood weapons do not work on these mobs because they are mo they are resistant to the debuffs you inflict to them for Thorian. For MV, the lore says that he has Dark Blood weapons and whenever two Dark Blood weapon users fight, the effects do not work on each other. So that's why M you should not use the Dark Blood weapons on MV and not and not on th and also not on Thorian as well. Next, we have the Core Alloy series of weapons. What they do is that the more energy you have, the more damage you'll do. Specifically, at max energy, you'll get a big damage boost, and this is commonly used by Berserkers because, well, their only other option is the Black Seal Greatsword, and they want maximum DPS, so they run this instead. Um, you can also use there's also um, Core Alloy fists and daggers, and so if you want more DPS that way. And yeah, you should run this if you have a ton of good Voltaic shards and you can constantly get energy. If you are someone who cannot get energy that fast or like is never at high energy, I do not recommend using this. And a good synergy would be Inferno, again, it's just free damage and free debuffs. Or it can run Cursed if you're a supportive character. The last series of weapons is the Blight Rock series. It drops from Thorian. There's only a staff and dagger of this variant. And what happens is that you have a small chance to inflict Cursed or weakness. Actually, I don't know about weakness, but if you da if you hit them while they have cursed or weakness, you'll do more damage to them. And this is pretty useful because Thorian and MV they are not immune to weakness, so you basically get the damage boost at all times. However, since they are immune to cursed, if you want to run B support, you should not run this 
the blight rock stuff in those boss battles because you will not be able to inflict the cursed. And some optimal combinations for this is Inferno for more debuffs or cursed enchant to inflict another debuff and the chaos orb along with that because the blight rock dagger debuffs they can trigger the cursed orb as well. Next, let's go on to the final enchant that we're going to go over, the Reaper enchant. As it shows from the Trello, you can you life steal from your attacks, and at, at and when they're low, you deal more and more damage. Um, I would not recommend running this unless you like um, life steal because the life steal is not a lot. It's pretty low ever since the Metrum's vessel released, and unless you're like a berserker or someone doing a bajillion damage, you're not gonna heal a, a substantial enough amount in order to get your HP back and it's pretty good if you are fighting a low uh, a lower HP enemy like if they're below half like almost all the fight this is actually not a bad option but I just can't recommend this for too many weapons because you have to nuke in order to utilize it on a final note I skipped over all the shop weapons that spawn because they have no effects and don't give additional damage overall I'll recommend using Inferno Dragon Bone and Ring of the Dragon, if you are someone who is running for conditional burst DPS, that doesn't want it to be too like rare to get this combination, and you are you don't you are not relying on many multi hits. If you are relying on many multi hits and have a consistent way to apply frost outside of the frosted plus frost ring weapon series, then I would recommend this the frost the frost method because your multi hits will be very effective and do a ton of damage. If you are a support DPS kind of, like um, Dark Rave debuffer, you can run Cursed, Chaos Orb, and the Ice Rin set in order to gain um, more debuffs and maximize them. Um, you can also run this with Berserker because Berserker inflicts a lot of debuffs from Carnage because of its multi-hit properties. Anything that can multi-hit a lot will have good use using this combination right here. It's not just Berserker, it's just a very good example. And to make and to put Dark Blood stuff in a nutshell, if it can deflect debuffs, it is extremely useful. But when it can't, you are better off not using this. Basically, if you hate getting Life Song for a support character, go Cursed or Inferno to be supportive via debuffs. And if you and if and use Reaper if you like to nuke and heal almost nothing from your normal attacks. If you had any questions about this video, um, comment what I should clear up on in this video. In the comments below, I'll probably make another video on it, probably like a one minute or two minute for like specific class combinations or whatnot. So yeah, enjoy.